Warning, the warning has been removed from this spider video. Let's just hope this video is educational enough for today's very different YouTube. Well, hi there. I'm down at one of my neighbor's houses and I said to them, hey, I can fix up the spider problem around your bins. I'm just looking over the uh, bottom of the green bin here and it's a typical redback spider scenario going on here. Uh, we're just coming into the spider season and I can just see tons of web here. There's leaves stuck in the web as well. It's going to be hard to see the spider during the day. They're reclusive. It's probably living somewhere up here. This type of scenario is extremely common in Australia around council bins. And if I go up to the top of the bin, we'll also see the webbing. I think it's a different type of spider. It might be a black house spider. I've got a nice little process for deterring spiders and hopefully when I'm done these bins will be spider free for years to come. So I'm going to drag these bins to my place just up the road. I'm going to try and capture the redbacks which are living downstairs. I'm not sure what I'll do if the spider's living upstairs. And I'm pretty sure that all three bins will present with exactly the same problems. I'll take the green bin first and as I move this uh, you'll see the spider horrific city sort of get exposed. Yes, all that um, drab of leaves and stuff, that's what you've got to look out for. That's classic redback. Rightio, yeah, I'm up at my place. I've put the bin on the tarp there. That may help me in seeing what's going on as I progress through this process. I'm just going to put a hockey strap, as we call them, across the top here so the lid doesn't fly open as I move the bin around. I've got my little devil garden wand upside down, so it's giving me a lazy flame. And I can come along and just uh, quickly do this not concentrating on an area for too long and anything that's up there is going to drop down and start to make this area clean I may even find there's no spiders here, it might have just been the webs left over from last year this is a little flame device that I use, it's for getting weeds in the garden, it's just a baby version and you spin it upside down and you get that lazy flame like that uh, but there is another way of cleaning out the underneath of the bins. Apparently water blasters do a pretty good job as well. This would be what uh, the more normal people would use, I dare say, yeah. That's really cleaning it out. Woo! But you know me, uh, doing stuff normally isn't my sort of thing. I think I prefer flames. I come back to the green bin and I'm going to try and retrieve the redback spider that may be living up there. I'm pretty sure it's there. I've got some gloves, I've got a torch, I've got a tub here with some silicon spray. I'll hopefully explain that soon. I've got a rubber chicken in case I start to panic. I've got some tools here to try and catch the spider and if it really starts to fall apart, I've got my spider spray and I've also got a little spritzer of water if the spider's playing too hard to get. I'm going to start by removing this clump of leaves and it's going to have the redback spiders uh, web and nest and stuff here. Uh, we're right close to the spring equinox in Australia and I don't think we're going to find many male spiders because they only live uh, apparently for six months. I need to be educational here, don't I boys and girls? Uh, I think I'll find there'll be a female recluse up inside the bin here but I just want to get rid of a lot of the clutter here so I can see what I'm doing. We've had some cracking hot days already. We've already had a couple of days over 30 degrees in Sydney which has caught a lot of people by surprise but we've also had some very cold mornings still. So it's that sort of time of the year where you get a bit of everything. That's probably best if I get the bin over on its side so I can really see what's going on up there. Whoa! So what do you reckon? Do you think there'll be a spider there? I'm pretty sure there is one there because I noticed the web under this bin kept being reset every couple of weeks. With the assistance of a torch and I've cranked the ISO of the camera right open, I can see the redback spider trickloosed up into a very dark corner there. It's going to be quite tricky to get out. As for if there are any other redbacks up there, I'll just go along here. You can see hopefully up in those very dark corners I can see another one there. Oh, crikey's! That's the second one. I'm hoping you can see her there. Uh, you can see her red back displaying nicely. That's about the only thing that makes them a little bit easier to see versus a black widow spider. Well, that's the second red back and just reversing across any further crikeys, will there be a third one? I mean, who knows? That's scary, isn't it? I've just got the camera back onto some normal settings and if you're looking at this bin naturally, well, that's what you're presented with. They're very hard spiders to see. They're very good at reclusing into areas where, well, you can't find them. This is going to be very tricky to deal with. Oh, get out of it, rubbish chicken. You're useless. That's never going to help me here. 
I made this tool recently uh, to get a redback spider out of Mrs. Cow and I'm actually thinking I might use mum's old brush that we used to get spiders out of the home for many many years. I'm going to try and get the spider out uh, using this. I've just noticed another red back here. It's a very small one and it's around that circle there. It's a juvenile. I'm hoping I can just pick it up onto the brush here. Yes, and I'll get it over to uh, that there. I've got it. Okay, that's prisoner number one, but that's only a baby. I've actually just changed my mind because I can see the red back spider has moved its legs and I'm going to use the tweezers and if I'm really fast, I'll get her. I got her. Okay, that's prisoner number two. Oh man, she's a beauty. I've got another one in there to get. Oh, the, my problem here is that if the spider decides to recluse down into behind the axle here, it's going to be near impossible to get out and it'd be a case of using flame or spider spray. It's extremely hard to see up here. This spider is very recluse into the corner. If I grab a leg, like the other one, I might be lucky I've got her. I've got her. She's frailing a web behind her. Oh! Just stay down there, that's the problem. They, they leave a web behind them and then they try to escape again. Hopefully that web's gone. There's your classic three generations of spider there. We've got baby spider, which is there. We've got a uh, little girl, little teenager, and we've got big, big mama. She's the one you want to get. They're really starting to wake up now. Ooh, they're having a little talk to each other. And no matter how much they try, uh, they will not get past that silicon spray and be able to climb out of this container. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. I've got my red back spider uh, convalescence home, let's call it, and I'll put the spiders in here. I'll just carefully grab Big Mother first, very gently of course, and uh, put her across into the spider home, making sure she's not frailing a web behind her. She's in the web of the other red back spider who's in there, that was Mrs. Cow's red back spider. I'll come in and carefully get little teenager, very carefully, one of the legs, and uh, take her across to the spider home. She's dragging web behind her. Okay, she's away. And we'll get her over to the spider tank, nice and carefully, of course. She's playing games on me here, and she's still stuck onto the tweezers. Come on, dearie, you've got to go and play in there. Oh, she doesn't want to play, does she? Do you blame her? Yeah, she's in there now. I think most normal people wouldn't try and capture the spiders. Uh, they are quite a dangerous spider. A normal person would come in with spider spray, something like that, and yeah, basically give it a raz. I'm going to hit this area with flame just in case there's anything else lurking about. Who knows, you might see something run for its life. And again, I think I've got just about everything that was up there. And this is, I think, the really good way to make sure that whatever is lurking about is, um, is getting taken out. I can still see it's pretty messy in here. I might have to get the water blaster onto this. I think the only thing that I didn't see, which I thought I might have seen, was a couple of redback spider egg sacs. Mind you, we have just come out of winter time, and normally they don't do that sort of activity in winter. Mind you, the redback spider that was up inside Mrs. Cow uh, showed to me that yes, they can lay egg sacs in winter. Anyway, I'll just clean this bin off, and then I'll move on to uh, the next bin to see what's going on there, eh? Just as I was doing the wash down of that bin, I saw a spider um, jump for its life there. It's down there, and I'll just pick it up very gently, of course. And I'll get it into the spider home. Oh, I think it's a wolf spider. I hope I'm right there. Okay, and uh, into the little home it goes, nice and gently, of course. Oh, it's in the redback's web there. Okay, I moved on to the red bin. Uh, the top of it was pretty clean. Underneath is a different design to the yellow bin that we've just done, and I think the redback spiders uh, prefer the yellow and the green bins. If I look really carefully here, there are juvenile redbacks. I'm just pointing them out. It's just dropped down. It's certainly alive and well. It's a bit fearful of me at the moment. It's on the tweezers now. Oh, maybe I should take advantage of that and get into the spider tank. I just do a bit of a dodgy brothers transfer here. The spider is on the tweezers and I'll get it over to the spider tank. I hope it's in. I hope. I'm having a good look around this bin here. Uh, a big mama's not shouting out at me. To me, it feels more like juvenile central. Yes, I really can't see a big mama yet. I'll come in and hit with a bit of flame and that certainly is going to sort out the girls from the girls. Because the men won't be here yet, I can tell you that. No, I can't really see anything uh, dropping down that looks that scary and spiderific. I think it was just um, the play area for the babies to, um, you know, hang out and get ready for summer. I'll do a proper clean with the high pressure hose here. 
Yellow bin's a final one to clean up and like our yellow bin it's showing all the signs of being spider horrific. I've got onto my bit of tarp and I'll just push the bin over so we can see what's going on underneath. Yow! Let's take a look at the gory gory details and learn about these spiders environments. Uh, there's the web and the stuff that gets caught up in the web and I'm just putting it over my little safe box there. And I'm taking a look over here now. Well, the first thing I can see is one of those black beetles. That's one of their favorite meals. Uh, I could only assume there is a red back up here somewhere. Maybe I'll do that little iris trick again. I'll clear out some of the web first and see if I can see her. Okay, the ISO cranked right open. I'm trying to see if there's a spider there. Maybe when it's up on screen, I'll see it. But uh, as I traverse along there, I can't really see a red back spider yet. Unless, is that one there or not? Hmm, or is it a shadow of something? It's very hard to tell, you know, trying to find something black in a near black environment. I'm just looking at the wheel here again. I've got that um, ISO cranked. I've got a torch under the camera as well that's hopefully assisting me. But you know, black spider against black wheel. Very hard to see. This is the other wheel and uh, I've had a bit of a look already. I can't see the spider jumping out of me. It's not been very obvious. They are really hard to see when they're uh, reclused up here. That is if they're there. I think this may be an old home. Uh, the other thing I can't see here, which is an important thing to find, is Redback Spider XX. Man, I'm seeing all the things that they eat there. So, obviously there's been a Redback Spider there. And obviously I'm seeing the web, but um, I'm not seeing the spider. I'll just get rid of a lot of this stuff here that burns. And I will put a flame over this and we'll see what comes running for its life. Okay, keep an eye out for anything that comes running. It's black and it's got eight legs and a red stripe. I think we're gonna find nothing. That's my guess here. No, I'm not seeing anything uh, scampering away. It, um, it's like an old home, I dare say. They might have moved to that uh, green bin which seemed to have all the spiders in it and I'm having a really good look here and I'm pulling everything out that's been crispy critted and I cannot see a spider here mind you I'm pretty sure I did say that when I moved this bin I didn't see any fresh setup web so yes there had been a red back spider here at some point but at the moment it's uh, clean so like a normal person I'll get the high pressure blaster in there and um, really clean it up for the final stage Just as the bins are drying out, waiting for the final process, it might be very wise to do some spider control education. I live in Australia, which is in the Southern Hemisphere. Our seasons are flip-flop versus people in the Northern Hemisphere. As I'm making this video, it's at the end of September. We're very close to our spring equinox. So we're headed into summer. Most of our audience would be heading into winter. Uh, the spider apocalypse for me a couple of years ago happened around Halloween. So Halloween for me is about five weeks away and our spider season really kicks off in October, November, December, January, February and it starts to tail off in fall here, or we call fall autumn. I've got times when I come in and I take out the redback spiders by burning the areas, uh, but I've got to be careful because if there's a total fire ban, I can't do any burns. Redback spiders tend to be fairly recluse in winter time. We've just come out of that. I feel it's very important if you find a spider during springtime and take it out, it's going to save a whole world of pain because these spiders breed harder and faster than rabbits and they breed in huge numbers. This is the product I'll be putting onto the bins to uh, stop the spiders from setting up home. It seems to stop all spiders from setting up home. I purchased this at Aldi. The cheapest that I've got it, it's that price right there. And because I've done this process before, you actually need a fair few tins to do a couple of bins. In fact, let's take a look at a bin that I applied lithium grease to at August last year. I've just got my yellow bin upside down. Let's take a look underneath here first. Okay, I've got it so the sun is shining right up inside where the spiders used to love to live. You know what? There's not a sign of a spider in there. There's no spider web. It is totally clean. And I can also show you the wheels here. That was another little home the spiders loved. You know what, I can't see any sign of spiders there. And of course, the area where many spiders love to live, all different sorts, underneath the lid, there is not a sign of any spiders. I can't see any spider web either. It's been a really, really successful way at stopping the spiders from playing games. 
Okay, that was my bin and it's lasted a year and I think it will go on for many more years like that. Let me show you something else I sprayed with lithium grease. Ah! Redback spiders love to set up their home in pots like this. This design here is almost perfect for them. They'll set up there, they put their drop down lines down to the bottom. They love their handle area. We had a redback spider here at the end of last spider season. It was up under there. It was actually a bit of a nightmare to get out and take out. I think I used a flamethrower in the end. And I put the white lithium grease here. And you know what? I know there's nothing here. There's no web. I can safely put my hand under here. And the best thing about this process is, sure, you can see it, but man, the spiders never come back. There is that saying, seeing is believing. I do have video of this pot prior to the lithium grease being applied. This was shot back in March of 2018. And the spider was a fairly stealthy, mature female redback spider. It was a time when I'd walked away from YouTube because, well, basically YouTube were treating producers very, very poorly. When I found this spider, it was just past the peak spider season. Mind you, we've had a very long, hot summer last summer. I dare say this next summer will be the same. And it's also been very dry. It's probably the perfect conditions for these spiders to breed up huge numbers. This redback was one of the few larger females that I found around our house. The other one, notably in this spider season, was the redback that was underneath my Toyota car. Because I've got a little control system that basically takes out the spiders uh, during the spider season at intervals of time, and this system is based around the breeding cycle of these spiders, especially when egg sacs are formed and how long it takes for an egg sac to open, I really like to get the spiders before I see an egg sac, and in this case, in this pot, that's what I found here. This female had only just moved in here, but she had not laid up any egg sacs. One single large breeding female redback spider can generate a clutch of spider sacs in a spider season. From that clutch of spider sacs, and there may be four or five of them, there could be multiple thousands of deadly redback spiders. It really is a staff of spider nightmares, but what isn't a nightmare is the white lithium grease is a great way of inhibiting these spiders from setting up their homes. If they can't set up their webs, well, they're never going to feel comfortable in living there. It's just a nice, cheap, easy way to make things safe. So that was that pot there, and that was a spider from last year. I did do a video of it, whether or not I ever put it up on YouTube, I don't think I have done so yet. Now what had me very perplexed was, there was another pot here, which was in the same sort of scenario as in temperature, the same part of the garden. It never developed a redback spider. But it wasn't until I moved this pot, I started to realize, oh, there's a little enemy underneath this that the spiders can't stand. Let's take a look. And I'm gonna to have to move uh, quickly here or else I'm gonna be bitten, I dare say. Okay, underneath this pot, guess who is here? Okay, have a very careful look on the ground of what's going on there. Can you see something there that would stop a redback spider? One thing that I've noticed is if there is an ant nest underneath a pot, there is a very, very good chance the redback spider can never set up a home uh, on that pot. And I did a video about these pony ants versus a redback spider, but oh dear, oh dear. It was all too much for YouTube to comprehend, wasn't it, hey? But that's a little observation that I've made. Let's keep the ants our friend. I'll return the pot to where it was. Ants definitely stop these spiders. Okay, the bins have been sun baking out in the sun for quite some time now. They've got to be nice and dry for the next process. Let's come in and get the white lithium grease in there and stop them spideys. Okay, I've put uh, the first bin up on a trestle here, so I've got a nice working height. I think the secret to this process is to be nice and thorough, to make sure you get inside these areas here. There's no use just spraying one side, you've got to get that inside area as well. And up the back here again being thorough, making sure you get into those spokes on the little wheels there, around the axle and all around the base there. That's the product there, it's not an ad for anyone, no one speaks to me. I spoke about Aldi before, they don't speak to me, you've got to shake it up before you use it. And I'll come in and do the base here around the axle. You can see the sprays on white and I'm going to put lots on. It's the sort of thing you're not skimpy with. And I think if you do this properly, well, hopefully you won't have to do it for a long time again. When you're doing the wheels, make sure you get both sides of those spokes because it's sort of got a, a piece there which presents a double side. And when you're doing the top of the bin, yeah, make sure you get right under there. If you're a little bit messy, you can come along and clean up the excess, but hey, it's only a bin, isn't it? It's nothing that special. On these bins on the front face at the top, there's quite a complex pattern in there, and it's really important to get a lot of white lithium grease in there. I nearly said silicon something, didn't I? <laughs> Have I said silicon before in this video? 
most probably. But that's a really, really important to really, you know, don't be lazy about applying the stuff here. You need stacks of it in the front. Okay, hopefully that's done. I've done it nice and thorough underneath here. Looks nice and white, doesn't it? Around the wheels is done as well. If you're wondering how much lithium grease that I put onto that bin there, well, this can is nearly empty and I can pull this red bin down and move on to the next bin. Yeah. I'm just doing the final touches to the green bin. Okay, the green bin is done, I think. Wasn't this the one which had all the spiderific action going on? Yes, yeah, so it was up there, wasn't it, hey? Okay, the job is done and I guarantee these bins will remain spider free for a long time to come. Now how much of that white lithium grease did I use to do these bins? Well I basically emptied those two tins there and this tin here is well three quarters empty. Let's call it I used three tins. The normal price of that stuff there in Australia, it hovers between seven to eight dollars. Don't pay ten dollars for it, it'd be too expensive. So it's like what, let's say a twenty-two dollar job to do three bins. Well, like a good boy, I'll take the bins back to where they belong, back to the rightful owner. You know, now I see this area in the afternoon, I'm starting to really understand why the spiders liked it here. These red-backed spiders are a little bit picky about where they live. If they find somewhere warm and somewhere recluse to stay in the warmth, it's the perfect home. And yes, what you see on screen there is the perfect red-backed spider environment. Nice and warm and some nice hidey holes to go and live in. Well, I'm sorry to inform the Redback Empire, those days are now over. Well, it's one thing to fix up one neighbour's bins. The only trouble is another neighbour has bins with Redback spiders. Mrs. Cow's been very quiet since she had her encounter with the flamethrower. It may be a great indication to how hot it's been. I've set up the flycatcher already and I've already caught a stack of great big blowflies. Yuck! That's what happens when you have a couple of days that crack up to 30 degrees in Sydney. Way too early in the season to have this many flies. Let's take a look inside the spider tank. That's the Mrs. Cow Redback Spider. She laid up a second egg sack on the 19th of September, today being the 21st of September. By my rough calculations, that egg sack will be due to open around Halloween time. The egg sack from Mrs. Cow was brought up onto the metal structure, but it is yet to produce any spiderlings. I've got a black house spider in there and some curious millipedes. Little plants are starting to grow inside here as well. The little baby redback is in there settling in and Big Mother is just behind her. Little jumping spider there playing a very dangerous game. And the little teenage redback spider hasn't quite found a home yet but I'm sure she will. There's a cockroach woody type thing that Mrs. Redback Spider had the other day. Yeah, she loved it. And I think that spider there, uh, I think it's basically stuck between a rock and a hard place. I've got a feeling it's passed away. Although it's very hard to tell on camera here, but this spider tank is about double the size of the one I used in the Redback Spider Study. Putting that metal structure in there has proved to be a very good idea. Because what's happening is the Redback from Mrs. Cow has made up a web structure completely within. Uh, this metal frame here. There's no web uh, traversing out to the glass at all. And the problem I had with spider tank, well one, when I did my redback study was the redback spiders love to set up their web on the corner of the glass here. And I think what will go on in here is, I can already see Mrs. Cow has taken this corner here. Uh, the red back that I caught today, the big one from under the bin, will take maybe this corner here. And the little sister, which is down here, but she hasn't quite found a home, will probably take another corner. But really, who knows, these spiders uh, do have a mind of their own. I can't tell them where to live. It's not really spider tank 2.0 because the sort of tank I want, I want to try and get away from these hard edges. I did put the lithium grease on the lid here. I think I like it better than Vaseline for some reason. Don't ask me why. And I will get this back on. It's sort of weird with these spiders. Uh, they almost make the perfect pet. Uh, the big trouble with them is they are very dangerous. They're very venomous. And you can get very sick or be killed if you are unfortunately bitten by one of these spiders. And that is the Australian Redback Spider.